All right. Hi, everybody. My name is John Busby. I'm the Managing Director of Broadband Now, and I am joined today by Tyler Cooper, the Editor-in-Chief of Broadband Now. Hi, Tyler. How are you doing? Hey, doing great. Thanks for having me, John. Appreciate it. Yeah, you got it. So big news in the world of broadband access affordability with uh, an infrastructure bill that passed. It had been talked about for a while. I'd love to dive in with you today on what you think it means for the digital divide, uh, what your expectations of bill, the bill are, and, um, and every, any other thoughts you have. So let me just get, get right into it. So a large infrastructure bill was passed, included a bunch of stuff, um, but what does it include that is designed to help broadband internet access or affordability? Absolutely. So you're right. Uh, the bill includes a number of programs specifically geared toward improving both broadband infrastructure deployment um, and internet affordability across the country. So it's sort of two prongs, as we've seen in the past. Um, but this is particularly looking at unserved and rural communities. Um, so the lion's share of the allocated funds are going to go to two programs, the Broadband Equity Access and Deployment Program, as you mentioned, and the Affordable Connectivity Fund. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of other programs in this, but I mean, overall, we can call this the most significant piece of infrastructure spending in the broadband space ever, really. Um, and although the total amount has been reduced, you know, we had an, an initial 100 billion being touted earlier in the year. Um, this still represents, you know, one of the most significant efforts um, going specifically toward targeting rural and unserved Americans, um, yeah, in the history of America. Well, that that's great. I mean, obviously, we would have liked the uh, hundred billion, uh, but let's talk about what the what the infrastructure bill does do. So, you first mentioned the broadband equity access and deployment program. So, uh, what is it designed to do? Does it replace anything? How much money was allocated, and, and sort of what's notable about this program? Certainly, yeah, you could see this as a replacement of sorts for um, prior FCC programs, but really it's going to run concurrent with things like the RDOF um, and other programs, so it's not necessarily a complete replacement, um, but it is significant for several reasons. One, um, the program contains $42.45 billion, um, and that is essentially subsidy money going to internet service providers to build out infrastructure for internet in unserved communities. Um, so on the surface, similar to programs we've seen in the past, um, the major noteworthy difference here is that the new program um, is going to be the first major funding initiative to rely on the FCC's new geospatial mapping, um, which is an improved uh, mapping process, which is currently in development, active development for a likely 2022 release. Um, not exactly sure when, but that's that's what we know so far. And the maps are widely expected to be a big improvement in terms of accuracy, specifically over the long-standing Form 477 deployment data, which you and I both know, and most people listening to this probably are very aware. Um, it's been widely criticized over the years. Um, so, you know, this will be the first program to take advantage of those maps, and it will be sort of a sort of the next evolution of funding initiatives coming directly from the FCC. So that that's great. Better maps, more more money. Um, yes. let, let's let's talk a little bit about the potential timeline, like, and I, I know that not everything's been released yet, but let's suppose that an internet service provider is interested in receiving subsidies and bids and then get some money. Like, like, do you have any, can you speculate as to when build outs would actually begin? So right now we only have a rough timeline, as you mentioned, um, for the build out program specifically, uh, but the FCC is, looking to complete uh, the broadband maps again likely in 2022 for public release so i'm hoping personally for a q1 q2 release of that data mm -hmm. um, and once that's done the government will essentially send a notice to each state that just basically says two things as i understand it um, one will be it'll contain the estimated amount of funding available to that state um, and two it'll invite the state to submit um, initial proposals for grants and by initial proposals, uh, I believe the National Telecommunication and Information Administration, TIA, will be distributing an initial 4.245 billion, so 10% essentially of the total allotment to states um, with like the first round when that happens. Um, regardless of when that happens, ISPs on their end will have a total of four years after being awarded a subgrant um, via this program to begin offering service to every customer um, that they 
are essentially pledging. Um, unless the state that the ISP operates in grants an extension on the deadline. So there's not too much specifics around this, but essentially construction must be underway or there must be an extenuating circumstance in the state that requires an extension. So broad strokes, four years. Um, okay. So it's a, let's say it's a rural area with very limited broadband access. Mm -hmm. By 2025, we would expect that community either to have access or ground to be broken and the build out underway. Precisely. And it's important to notice that that 10%, right? So, you know, the total 42.45 billion um, being allocated to the program is going to be available until the funds are completely expended. Um, so really, we're, it's, I think it's important to look at this as more of a long term major projects in many areas of the country, this is going to be ongoing, much like the art off. Okay, well, well, that's great. Um, so we just talked about access getting more people physically able to get wired broadband internet. But let's talk about the other part of affordability and the affordable connectivity fund. That's a new name, right? What is it designed to do? Um, how much money, how is it allocated, what's notable, and how is it different than the current program, which is called the Emergency Broadband Benefit? Exactly. Uh, yeah, you just nailed it on the head, really. So the, the bill is setting aside $14.2 billion um, for the Affordable Connectivity Fund, which really can be seen as a sort of successor um, to the ongoing Emergency Broadband Benefit. So they will run concurrently until the uh, EBB runs out of, of funds. Um, so, th but the big difference is this will allow eligible households to subscribe to broadband service for a reduced rate, much like the EBB, um, but the subsidy is going to be reduced, um, unfortunately, so it's $30 per month instead of $50 per month. Um, now, so it's it's reduced down from that, so $20 less than the existing program. The sort of side benefit of that, though, is that it's going to be made available to more Americans um, by extending it to homes at or below 200% of the federal poverty line. Um, the EBB currently is a 135% qualifier. So it's sort of a trade-off of being a lower subsidy, uh, but being available to a wider body of Americans. If my income is less than 200% of the poverty line, and I sign up for an internet service provider, a $60 plan, I'll get like a $30 um, a $30 voucher, $30 off my bill. Is that how to think about that? Correct. And that's going to be from uh, participating providers, which we expect the FCC to probably publish an official list soon. All right. So we talked a little bit about the, the funding specifically for states. You, you talked about that. When we were uh, preparing for this call, you also mentioned that the, the federal government had um, some different uh, definitions, I guess you could say, for what qualifies as broadband as part of the broadband equity access and deployment build out. Yes. So what, what has it been previously and, and what is it now? Sure, so the federal standard um, has been and remains 25.3, so 25 megabits download and three megabits upload for the, just the definition of broadband service. Um, but that definition has been both academic and also practical um, because we've used that for virtually all the major funding initiatives we've had uh, over the last half decade plus since it was last changed in 2015. Um, and although th this bill you know, doesn't specifically alter the federal definition for broadband, um, it does signal, in my mind, a broader shift in how these um, new funding initiatives will be measured. In general, um, you know, originally some Democrat lawmakers um, pushed for a symmetrical standard to be used in this bill for the first time. So that was going to be something like 100 over 100. Um, and that was specifically for the infrastructure subsidies and the uh, sort of plans that they'll be built on. But a final standard for the program was ultimately decided and it was 100 megabits download and 20 uh, megabits per second upload. So still a marked increase from the sort of federal high level definition. Um, and again, it's a it's the largest ship shift upward in terms of requirements for a major federal broadband program in over half a decade. Um, so although it doesn't change the definition at large, um, it does, since this is going to be obviously a very major funding initiative, it does sort of change the state of play when it comes to what type of service will be built out um, and what standards it'll be held, held to. And in practical terms, in, area where, in areas where there's competition in the US, most folks have access to 100 megs download. And, um, and if this extends this to rural and underserved areas, I think that'll be a big deal. Absolutely. At the same time, we have high standards at Broadband Now. 
and when you like when you um, step back, Tyler, what's still what's still missing as far part of the package, whether it's underfunding, whether it's a policy issue, whether um, like like this seems like it's going to take a bunch of uh, a bunch of steps towards what we all want every American having access to affordable wired broadband speeds, um, but might not get all the way there. So what do you think is still missing? Yeah, I mean, John, I've been thinking about this a lot, obviously, and, you know, out of the gate, it's important to consider that the passage of this bill is cause for celebration. Um, you know, this is a, a major funding initiative, you know, it's being called a game changer, and, and it really is in many ways. Um, but at the same time, on big sort of occasions such as this in this uh, space, as you know, it's, it's important to recognize that there's a lot more work ahead after the sort of announcement and the, the grand plans to make sure that the funds are used to actually help Americans who need them most. This is something we've talked about um, a ton over the years. And, you know, we still don't know one thing. We still don't know exactly how much of an improvement the new FCC's maps will be, um, which is going to be absolutely vital for focusing efforts on Internet deserts, right, and areas that have been, you know, long been ignored by previous attempts at closing the digital divide for one reason or another. Um, and it's sort of a tangential element of that is that, you know, there was some pretty promising language in the initial bill about prioritizing community broadband efforts um, in areas where that made sense. And uh, so things like municipal providers, um, which we talk about a ton, um, that language was ultimately removed in the final bill. Um, so, you know, I think, you know, it's my opinion that, you know, I still believe municipal providers have a, a very important place in this conversation. So I'd love to see um, some more from the FCC in regard to that. There were you know, there's a few additional um, programs within this bill that do kind of go into that a bit. For instance, there was, you know, two billion for broadband grants and loans distributed by the Department of Agriculture, um, and there was also um, six hundred million dollars, I believe, for private activity bonds for uh, broadband projects. So states will be receiving some of that um, that funding. But I think that overall, um, again, the devil's in the details and with this program, it's such a monumental step forward, but it's sort of using data we haven't seen yet. Um, so I think that's the big question in my mind is just, you know, getting our hands on that data, seeing where this money is going to be targeted, seeing how specific that targeting is. Um, that'll really tell us, you know, where we're at in terms of the state of play for this program. Makes a lot of sense. Thanks, Tyler, for continuing to be focused on this issue. And, and thanks for talking to me today. Absolutely. Thank you, John. Onward. Right.